Zidon Danny. Aloha. Electro Ninja here. Astrid Lenore here. And Quixote is behind the camera. Quixote is behind the camera. <laughs> Today we will be unboxing something very special. The Final Fantasy XIV TTRPG. A brand new car? Look at all that bubble wrap. That's like a Doctor Who monster right there. Indeed. <laughs> da 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 da. In all of its glory, look at that. Indeed. And let's go ahead and show the back. Uh, tilt it. There, it's kind of glary. There we go. Discover a realm of adventure reborn. The Final Fantasy XIV tabletop role-playing game, or FF14 TTRPG for short, is a gateway into the magical world of Final Fantasy XIV, through which you and your friends can embark on exciting and memorable adventures. In this game, one player will act as your game master, the arbiter and lead storyteller, while the rest of your group will play as adventurers. Together, you will confront powerful foes, interact with a diverse cast of characters, and roll dice to create a story all your own. As you explore the realm of Eorzea and beyond, remember that above all else, the point of the game is to have fun. So, I'm anticipating some beautiful artwork, because, you know, Final Fantasy. Indeed. What else to expect? I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> mostly stuff from 14, I would assume. Well, I mean, as far as the actual game mechanics and how good it is and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, this is the uh, the very first edition. Um, like, there are some game... Uh, there's a little bit of game books in here, uh, from what we know, as well as there's, um... Some character sheets, um, but and some dice and some dice. That is true. Quite a few dice. From How would you just open game. it up and show people what's yeah, on? Yeah, that's, that's like, true. <laughs> that's kind of the point of a. Well, we could talk about it for forty-five minutes before we do that. We could technically, but it's 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 nowhere near going to be at the I, same I, level as. I, I, I hear that YouTube doesn't really get views unless you go at least three hours with it. You sure? All right, uh, all right. Let's open this. See what treasure waits beneath that lid. Ooh. Ooh. Well, we have a shiny packet of very candy-looking dice here that are not edible. Don't eat dice, kids. Uh, we also have some very interesting information on the box. Oh, uh, bottom of the box. So, you know. What do we got there? We got checks, encounter overview. Some of this isn't, it's kind of like a shadow. Looks like it's probably like a GM screen cheat sheet kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. and I have a feeling. It's, so we got the player's book. So there's that. The game master book. Don't, much don't, like... don't hate the game book, hate the player book. <laughs> there's the game master book. And then Ooh, we've got comics in here. Oh, that's Check fun! That out. Got a little comic strip with little googly-eyed Final Fantasy people. Okay. All right. just... Nope, this is auto focusing. All right. <laughs> we'll so out. on the bottom of the box, <laughs> it has the um, map of Eorzea. Yep, and that looks like a very familiar map if you played fourteen. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it's uh. Looks like it's just the original area for like Realm Reborn. Maybe has some, maybe storm uh, up to Stormblood, but yeah, I think you've got some Stormblood stuff in the corner. Well, there Alamigo is part of the same continent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, we didn't visit it, obviously. And see, oh, it doesn't have the um. It, it doesn't have a coat of arms on Alamigo, so. And then, uh, yeah. so uh, I guess we'll start at the bottom of the bo uh, where the bottom of the box was. So we've got go. some tiles. Yeah. Like. Those all punch out. Yeah, those all punch out. Um, looks Even like what the little boomerang shaped things are. The bo oh yeah, like uh, doors maybe or... maybe like uh, uh, like that kind of reminds me of AOE attacks to a certain. No, degree. could be. Um, I'm sure we'll find out. We'll probably find out as we read through the book. Um, got some monsters. I think these are supposed to be our companion. Uh, yeah, these would be companions, maybe. They say companion, yeah, don't they? and they have some yeah. thing about companions. Oh, you get your joke about companion. Yeah. The best part of Final Fantasy XIV. And some more... Folgers in your cup. 
characters. Um, so yeah, it looks like mostly it's like uh, it's got some really nice monsters um, mm -hmm. uh, displays. Oh, little monster um, tokens. Yeah. yeah. Looks like the artwork on these tokens is pretty faithful to what's in the game. Yeah. Looks so, like they just what's... took pictures of the models. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. They probably did that. So turn it right side up for well, yeah. But go to the other side. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There, there you go. go. There we go. Yeah, got a little glare on there. But yeah, they're just like. I have to say, I really do enjoy that basilisk model. It's a it's a completely different take on it, and I love it. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, so then. We got the other, uh, the last side, the last yes. one. So, so we have some famous NPC tokens there. Yep. As Ooh. well as those would be, uh, those would probably be supposed to be our specific characters. Um, yeah. Who is Celeste? I think she was oh. somewhat important, but I don't remember exactly. I don't remember. She her. looks familiar. I can't remember. Yeah, it actually that. looks like it looks like Yoshi P's tune is what it looks like. You know, you, that might be who it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But it didn't. That was not her name. I don't think. But I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. And then obviously, so yeah, AOE is like what that is for sure. Mm -hmm. And like different markers for different things. Yeah. All right. So then. Yoshi. Oh, and we Yoshi. have some nice color tile maps here. Indeed. Kind of small though. Glare. Yeah, there's a, there's gonna be a bit of glare, unfortunately. I see. I would hang this on my wall. This is beautiful. <laughs> it, it it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, this looks like uh, this looks like uh, landscaping like work here. So like, you can like uh, this is what I'm gonna do with my front yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. Then you can larp it. <laughs> well, this one's this one's a bit bigger. Um, it's too, well, except it's separated. I don't know. That does look like it's supposed to be one map, though. Maybe yeah, they just didn't want to print over the seam. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, it, uh, like that looks like Northern Thailand. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the that waste. Uh, yeah, war torn area. That's all just. All these... Yep. More green. More green, and yeah, general purpose maps is what those white spots are for. They'll double as Norvant maps. I mean, you're not wrong there. <laughs> All right. So then we got some more. Oh, here we've got actual names. I didn't even. I didn't quite mm. realize that before. No, I don't think the other ones had it. No, they did. I did just. They? Uh, I. I just okay. didn't. Re I, I just didn't, didn't think about it. What at the time. Say? I can't read it. it. Says Southern Cave Crystal Trove. Yeah. Trove. Yeah. Yeah, that glare is pretty bad in here. Maybe yeah. it's just the finish on these things. It might be. Oh. And then some more desert and water area. And again, the textures on these are just really nice for, you know, just being a basic battle map kind of thing. Yep. All right. Oh, and we've uh, we've got our character sheet. There's sheets. our first character sheet. It's a black mage. Yep. Mm. The dog is here. The dog is. The dog here. is here. And she's being called. <laughs> so this... Oh, these are different levels. That's why we have multiple sheets. Yeah. So, uh, so level fifty, level forty. Does it go? Uh, is it? Each? Probably goes all the way down to. Yeah. So it's basically doing it in. I'm guessing it 10. goes up by tens. Yeah. Yeah. So tens probably our lowest, maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh. Thirty is our lowest. Thirty is our lowest. Okay. Kind of weird. Well, wait. Does it say? Oh, but the, uh, they are at the jobs. That might be why. Hmm. Because black mate, you don't yeah. become a black okay, mate until thirty. That's true. So there's the dragoon. Fifty, forty, and thirty. Then we got our white, white mage. mage. Fifty. Who is your requisite adorable Lollafell? Yep. 40. Always. And 30. And then yeah. we got the warrior. Warrior. Warrior is a tank. Yep. 
So 50, 40, and 30. Where's Blue Mage? Uh, well, they didn't. I think they just did those four for the base. You need to wait for the expansion for Blue Mage. I think in the that they might have some instructions on how to do it because, like I said, this is the early. Um, uh, this is a pretty early one, so we we might at some point get actual books for this. Is yeah. my guess. Yeah, there's a lot of jobs missing, so there's room for growth. Yeah, for sure. So, we got the rule summary. So, Several copies. I'm sure. I'm assuming one copy per player on that. Yeah. So let's go ahead. So, yeah, it looks like there are four copies. So, there's one for Joel, one for the camera. And one I would for like me. the Caesar salad with a side. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So. Yeah. So they got the. Um, there's uh, some information about the checks. Um, when a character takes an action where the outcome is uncertain, the player controls the yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So that's like your base Pretty mechanic is primary action, secondary action, movement. Yeah. Um, so something you've seen in some way, shape, or form before, yeah. I'm sure. Um, and there are ability checks. Uh, okay, they do, you do use advantage dice, it looks like. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see what the core mechanic is here. It's got to have it. So, okay, D20 plus value equals total. So yeah, this is very similar to a 5th uh, edition D&D type of system. Yeah. Um, I do have to say I'm kind of, I'm kind of intrigued about the limit break uh, detail. Mm. During an encounter, the, D, uh, or the GM will inform players if and when limit breaks become available, hmm. after which the party can use up to three limit breaks However, each adventurer can only use one limit break per encounter. Hmm. So it's more common, it sounds like, than uh, than what it is yeah. in the actual game. But well, I'm guessing they're going to be a little bit less over the top than the ones in the game. Yeah. But I could be wrong about that. I'm, so. I'm also wondering if there's a mechanic that the DMs use to, or GM, excuse me, uses to figure out when it's the time to bring in those limit breaks, or it's just whenever it feels like the right time. Yeah. I don't know. Or so, when, the, when the party's losing. Yeah. Um, oh. And it's kind of also interesting. Um, so uh, in the video, we're showing the Black Mage strategy guide, but each of them oh, okay. actually has like a strategy guide for each of the, uh, for each class. Yeah. So we've got, so we've got general specific on the various sides. White mage. And your dragoon. Dragoon. See, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that it said DPS for black mage. Yeah. Or do it. This is a turn based game. It should be like DPT or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Well, you got to play it really fast if you want your DPS numbers to go up. That is Otherwise, true. Otherwise, you might get kicked out of the group. So before we look in the actual books, let's <laughs> uh, let's take a look really quick at the dice. <laughs> I'm I'm intrigued by the dice. Um, yeah. I, I I think it's really interesting that what they uh, what they did is they basically each character gets a um, a, a specific die uh, gets a d20 that is specific to their color. So tank gets blue, healer gets green, and the DPSs get red. Oh yeah, and then yeah. there's also um, each. Uh, looks like each player gets um, two d sixes as well. I'm guessing the black and white are DM dice. That's what I'm assuming as well. However, I think that um, it might be like to assist with it, like advantage and stuff like that as well. It could be that, yeah. Um. Mm. So nice large numerals on these dice, which is yeah. nice that if you if you're, you know, having vision problems, but then again, you still have to read the d20 numbers. So, yeah. So, let's actually take out the um so pretty much just d6s and d10s, 20s. Yeah. Yeah. No. No love for the d12 in this game. No. Nope. Or any other really. So, yeah. So, uh looks like, uh, so pretty much all of the numbers are just standard numbers. Except for... Except for the 20. A little Comet Burst, which is the 20. Yep. And then it looks like uh, for the D6s, it's just the just numerals. Just regular numerals. So, fair enough. No pips, not even for Gladys Knight. Oh, and that's also uh, no, another advantage, is that it does have the line underneath the 9 and the 6. I would hope so, because you're not going to know... Yeah. 
Does it have the the line to, it doesn't have the line to the nineteen, so you don't think it's sixty one. <laughs> I think that that's a little bit more understandable, but well, you know, you just get confused and suddenly think you're using a D one hundred and exactly that's really small I mean, and shaped wrong. If you've yeah. seen an actual D one hundred, I mean, they're they're. Pretty much the same shape as these things, only <laughs> more faceted. So should we look at the Game Master book first, or the player well, book first? they're telling us to read this first, so let's take the Game Master book first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put this artwork. Oh, um, am I? Oh. Or I can put it, I, I can put this down looking at it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so that's why, uh, so that's why it says to read, uh, to read this first. Is that they're technically the same book, um, because this is chapters one and two, while this one is three and four, and then well, the scenarios. That's, that's very common, even with things that have been in the same book together. They'll do the player chapters first, and then they'll have the DM section that says, "Don't read past this if you're a player. Don't you dare. If you do, you will be excommunicated from all games." All right. So do we still want to look at the game master book first. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> So, uh, like we said, uh, game, uh, game Master Book has chapters 3, which is running the game, chapter 4, which is adventuring, and then the information about the scenarios. Which is probably your uh, introductory adventures. Yeah. And then chapter 5, continuing the story, which basically sounds like... Um, sounds like, yeah, story if books for if you want, yeah. If you want to keep playing. Exactly what it says on the package, basically. Pretty much. <laughs> I think that, I think we, uh, see, we need to get uh, three more... Uh, or. Two more people, and yeah. then we can uh, then we can actually like play this properly. <laughs> yeah, that's true because it's set up for a group of five, a GM and four players. Yeah, they should have included a VHS tape that had like Yoshi P and a turtleneck. And... <laughs> Absolutely, they should have. <laughs> Do you know that reference? I'm not sure, but I'm just envisioning Yoshi P doing his best Steve Jobs now. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe it's against a black screen and he's wearing a black turtleneck. So yeah. Yeah. This is a dragon strike. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I don't think so now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so uh, so chapter three has running the game, choosing a game master, um, uh, gathering your party, what if I don't have a rule book, choosing a game day, what if I can't find enough players, uh, stuff about the companions, um, which uh, starts with a defender, then healer, then attacker, uh, then preparing for the game, which is laying the groundwork, uh, reviewing the scenario, going beyond the starter set, and then for your first uh, for first game sessions, making introductions, and then for playing the game, quick saving. It's very important. You can sort. save often. <laughs> you can save, but don't save over your uh, your previous game, just in case you want to go back. Yeah, apparently. Oh. <laughs> Additional rules and considerations, using items, and placing markers. Um, again, weird with the placing markers, but okay. Um, and then there's adventuring uh, for Chapter 4, which has role-playing basics, making checks outside of uh, encounters, making multiple checks, awarding advantage dice, GM discretion. Um, then there's the passage of time, one action, one bell. Okay, I'm I'm intrigued with the, what that's gonna mean. Um, adjusting time frames. Again, what? <laughs> uh, delegating actions. Encounters in the passage of time. Travel, and then rest and sleep. Rest and sleep. Um, and then the the three scenarios. I think we should probably skip that for this. So that, uh, the players can uh, whoever gets this can actually like not be spoiled for that. Well, I mean, we could read titles and entice them with what could have been. Yeah. Uh, so all the, uh, the uh, so what we'll tell you is that the um, first scenario is called the Crystal Paper. Uh, the second one is Imperial Machinations, and scenario three is Heroes of Operation Archon. Mm, very interesting. Well, that's. Pretty, I think it sounds like it's covering um, a Realm Reborn. Mostly, yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I also uh, like to point out that the catchy um, title of the scenario three, three has the acronym HUA. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, and then chapter five, continuing the story, finishing the uh, a scenario, 
Handling Party Death, uh, Defeat, um, Downtime Between Adventures. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last bit is Confidence Makes the GM and Frequently Asked Questions. So what you're saying is GMs are confidence artists. Apparently. Okay. Yeah, got it. Definitely. That actually, that tracks. That tracks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, uh, so that, uh, uh, some actually really good in, uh, information here. So uh, symbols and uh, formatting in this book. Um, bold blue text is primary and second attributes. Uh, bolded red text is ability names. Uh, uh, parentheses is uh, step, uh, steps and timing. Italics, or sorry, brackets is steps and timing. Italics, dialogue and ability type. Bold, black bold, um, is enchantments, enfeeblements, and traits. Then the little uh, um, speaker icon is scenario, text, to read aloud. Black bold is my favorite in human. Okay. Um, uh, the little meteor with the GM symbol, GM only scenario information. So that's really helpful because sometimes, like, uh, when you're, uh, uh, I've had moments where I'm reading through a, um, a, a, a scenario or whatever yeah. in uh, uh, in D N uh, D, &D yeah. books, and it's like, okay, what am I supposed to be telling the players here? Well, also, like, if you're a player that's reading through mainly one of those combo books that has GM information and player information, you see that, and you're like, okay, if I don't want spoilers, I'm not going to read that bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's going to be really helpful for people who are wanting to get interested into this. Um, and then INVK is Enemy Invoked Ability. So, okay. interesting. Very interesting details. Yeah. Yeah, it goes through the whole book with me. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you, uh, how far, uh, how much do you think we should uh, talk about? Well, do you about? have to level your companion? That is actually a good intro. Uh, you have to go into fates in the in the shroud to level your chocobo up. <laughs> so, and you get yokai medals for doing so. So I think if we kind of just skim through this, we got a run in the game, which is you know exactly what it sounds like. Basically, gathering party. Looks like we've got information about companions, which I'm guessing is what you use if you have less than four players. Yeah. Well, uh, also it's because it's the chocobos. So. Oh, you only use them. Well, but you... there are. Well, I guess they are all chocobos, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there are the NPCs, which I think that those, uh, like, technically you could do that, because yeah. we know that we do that. <laughs> we have NPCs play along. Um, yeah, or, I mean, one person playing multiple PCs, that happens. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it, it does uh, actually suggest that you could play online. Um, I kind of wish that, uh, like, as far as I'm aware, there's no... Set up uh, any system set up already with this. Uh, with I this wouldn't system. be surprised if not now because it's pretty new. But I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if very shortly it makes its way under Roll Twenty because there is a ton of stuff on there already. Yeah, and uh, I think like the biggest reason why it's, uh, it might take a little bit longer with like Roll Twenty or other places like it is that um, for one, this is just very early in development. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of videos of people over the next few. Uh, months, um, dissecting the game, talking about it, and all this jazz. Yeah. Um, I actually expect, uh, I, I'm not, I feel like Mione would probably do something with it, but I'm not sure. Likely. Um, but I think even, you know, minus, you know, an actual established site with the, you know, rules already factored in there, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for doing, like, foreign games, stuff like that. It seems like most of it, you know, being together at the same table is nice, but could be optional. Yeah. If you've got people that are, like, time zones away from you. Not that that's half true of any of us here. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> time zones. Yeah. Time zones suck. Yeah, they do. Well. So, yeah, there's, there's some very interesting information. Um, they do actually have some really inf uh, interesting information about choosing a game master, which, I mean, honestly... It involves that, drawing that, the short straw, that right? Is Pretty not, much. That is, that is not within the <laughs> shot. I was yeah, it wouldn't be. So choosing a game master. Yep, just right there. Find the person your group likes the least. I'm mostly just doing yeah. a two shot with the two of you right now because you're talking more than really. Yeah. yeah. But. Oh. So yeah, if your group is missing a GM, if yeah. uh, so. 
Most of this is pretty universal. It's covered in every RPG because they pe think people can't think for themselves. Yeah. Um, and also people who might be new to RPGs in general. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so, uh, and then it also gives a little warning at the bottom of, uh, here, Chapter 3, to basically say um, that there are spoilers from pages 18 through 61, so that would basically be the scenarios, I'm assuming. Yeah. So, we will not be reading anything from those. Um, but yeah, so the next group is the stuff about the oh, companions. God, yep, your companions, and let, as in the game, yep. the video game, I mean, they're defender, healer, and attacker, and you choose which role... Yeah. So they do have levels, it looks like, it, it, because it shows the information for level 30, 40, and 50. Yeah, and that tracks with the character sheets as and well. They auto they automatically change with the character. Yeah, so I would assume that uh, that, that would basically... That would be my assumption, that. yeah. That's probably... A rather, well, I mean, I enjoyed um, leveling up my Chocobo, but... It can be annoying. No, it isn't. <laughs> you just, get, just get Blue Mage, because then the, the XP is buffed. That is fair. That is true. Yeah. Do the... Uh, that's definitely a good way to do it. <laughs> oh. Level your chocobo as a blue mage. So. And you've got I, set up stuff. Yep. Putting the game stuff out. Making sure you read the stuff ahead of time. All that. Yep. Um, let's see here. So, first, uh, your first game session. Uh, it doesn't... Oh, here we go. So, it does have some stuff about the markers. So, we got tile markers... These markers are used when the ability or effect generates a marker that covers a specific area. So yeah, so that's basically what those um, the, markers that we were discussing and then earlier. And the boomerangs are corner markers if you have an area of effect that probably that ah. needs to be moved into and out of and stuff like that. Yeah. Which I feel like the boomerangs are probably going to be the uh, thing that a lot of uh, a lot of DMs Honestly, are this use. this is a really good idea, if you, especially if you're using just a, a flat tile map like they give you. You know, because yeah. you can set out your square effects and just move them however big you need them. So, and uh, it's got the information all right here. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, we're not going to go into too much detail about every single little detail in here, but um, because yeah. it's, a long, it's a long book, and we want you guys to actually sit down and read it yourselves when you get the book. And, you know, buy it yourselves, because you should support these people. They make good stuff. Yes, exactly. And Unless you hate them, in which case, don't buy it. <laughs> but I mean, you, you're gonna make baby Yoshi P cry though unless you're a dirty stinking wow player <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> hate those wow players so yeah got some uh, got Raven some stuff about role playing player. Um, god forbid split war players making checks outside <laughs> of encounters so they do have travel so uh, um, and they have a little picture of the uh, Etherite. Chris, uh, Etherite yep so I would assume that etherites factor into this game in some way, shape, or form. Unsurprisingly, because that's pretty much entirety of what the game is about. Yeah. As long as you have enough money, you can teleport wherever you want. Pretty much. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I'm kind of getting the feeling, based off of uh, just uh, from what I'm seeing so far, that they do plan on expanding it quite a bit, and probably like getting like the actual massive books, like what yeah. uh, D and D and other. I would hope so, books. but on the other hand. This set here seems very much like they're setting out feelers, seeing how much of an interest there is in stuff like that. So if you are interested in having a full game with like lots of big, massive, beautiful books and stuff... Absolutely get this. Yeah, get, get this. Put your money where your mouth is. Yep. Well, I mean, is this worth it for what you get, though? I, mean, I would uh, say so. How much did you pay for this? Uh, so this was, I believe, about 50? I thought you said it was 60. It might have been 60. Anyways, oh, okay. So it was it, it uh, basically the same amount as a standard book, though. What is that? What is what is the yeah. what does the player guide go for these days? About fifty. Or just 60. the player's guide, and just mm -hmm. or what about the GM guide? Same. Uh, about the same, yeah. Okay. So uh, I yeah, mostly get like. Yeah. I remember when those things were like thirty. Yeah. They might be uh, inflation. Yeah. Inflation's a bitch. Um. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Language. Um. But yeah, those um, but those are hard, you know, thick hardcover books. I yeah. don't want to like downplay this at all, but I'm just saying it's like no. it is pricey for what you're getting. Now, granted, you know, it's pretty to look at. Yeah. And you know, it looks like the dice are decent quality and everything. But you know, I mean, it, if you're looking to get your money's worth, then you know, this is a little pricey for what you're getting. 
that's interesting. So, uh, uh, at this point, we can uh, we uh, we can like glance through uh, some of the right. stuff that's coming. It looks like we've but got we're keeping your, this purposely your off. monster manual bestiary section here. Well, this is the adventure. And then, okay, yep, yeah, we, we got adventures. So. You can get pictures of the book later. Or just... Yeah. If I do decide to, if yeah. anything I'll show you guys, yeah. we'll put that over the video. Now, now yeah. we can read the one it's Now we can actually, first. yeah, the you one roll. that. Oh, and they actually have this, uh, the um, rule summary on the back as well of yeah. the player's handbook, um, as well as on the back of the. Um, Game Master book. So it's nice they that they the gave credits. you lots of copies of this, even though you could just literally just make copies of the back of the book if you wanted to. Yep. But now you don't have to. Yeah, you could just give. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have more than five players. Yeah. Well, no, because you could use the backs of the higher level and lower level sheets, couldn't you? Probably. Anyway. There, there's a lot of things that you could do with this. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, the, uh, so it's got the uh, an introduction in the... Um, player's book. Um, it also gives the, um, the the same little symbols and formatting of this book that it had in the previous. It very helpfully tells you what's in the box, too. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, so, yeah, starter set components, it tells you, uh, like, both books, the dice. Yeah. The, I guess that's yeah. useful in case they missed out anything and you're, you know, missing... Yeah, a, if you're, like, or if you're uh, reassembling uh, the, uh, the, uh, the entire box, you true. can just be like, okay, what am I missing from here? Because this has yeah. all of the information. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, for the table of contents, it has a tutorial, which is interesting, and that's a lot of pages, actually. <laughs> because... I'm guessing this is one of these kind of player run-throughs where it has just kind of narrated, like, Bob has the boyer go and do the boyer things. Yeah. And then the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, because that looks like that's where the comics are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's got, uh, it got a lot of information in there. Um, yeah. honestly, uh, I don't really want to show too much of the comics because, like, just looking at it briefly, it already looks kind of funny. So, I, I think that, uh, um, We'll leave that for you guys to discover on your own as well. Um, but yeah, so, and then several pages later, we have getting started, uh, commonly used terms, playing the game, and the golden rule, um, which, fair. Put it, which, that, of course, is eat or be eaten, I think. Something like that. <laughs> what? Eat or be eaten, isn't that the golden rule? Do no, treat others, others like you want to be treated. Do unto others. Oh, oh, do unto others before they do unto you. Got it. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So yeah, and then there's making checks when not to make a ch uh, yeah when and when not to make a check. Um, advantage dice, penalties, advantage dice and penalties. Uh, isn't that the exact same thing as these? Um, but it's together. It's like a peanut butter cup. Opposition checks, um, and then adventures, uh, jobs, traits, abilities, attributes, and adventure profile, and then. Chapter two is the encounters, uh, basic starting encounter rounds, surprise turns, and so on and so forth. There's a lot yeah, of information. Yeah. Um, so it looks looks pretty standard as far as the basic elements of the game go, and it looks like the mechanic is going to be fairly familiar if you played D and D. Yeah. So are you going to just start as like a level thirty job? Is that how the is that, that just looks like? That that's what looks it, like. That's what we don't. Like. We don't have anything that's leveled lower than thirty, as far as the play, player stuff. So anyway, there's, there's no like, there's no like leveling up as a class, and then doesn't look like it. Uh, may, maybe, maybe they'll do it in the. Final I was going to say maybe they'll bring it in in supplemental rules. Yeah. Um, because I would, you know, one thing that you know strikes me as a little bit cheesy about this is the going by ten levels. It's like, why don't you just make the levels bigger and go by one level in that case? Yeah. Um, so maybe there's plans for going in between and going before and after what's yeah. currently here. Yeah. My 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 theory, that uh, actually is, is it a game theory. Maybe. Um, so uh, since it does mention the three scenarios, is basically the uh, the first scenario, Crystal Caper, you're supposed Most to be likely. doing that yeah. at thirty. Second scenario, you're supposed to be doing it at forty. And the third scenario is at forty. And then when they release the 50, 50. or yeah fifty sorry, um, when they release the final version, that's when you're going to be able to like, here's all some things that you can put in between there and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe. And I mean, yeah, it could be this that they you know wanted to. 
It could be also that they wanted to keep the levels consistent with what's in the game, but also didn't want to get all those little subdivisions like you would have in an MMO, because your average tabletop, you know, you go up to 20-ish levels yeah. in, in, in a normal game. Yeah. So, well, even even a normal game, most of uh, like most of the um, pre-built stuff is like maybe to ten, mm-hmm. give or take. Yeah, it, it really depends on the system that you're in, but I, there's very seldom more than twenty, is what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so yeah, so basically from um, page four all the way through sixteen are basically. Um, low comics and information yeah, we about... we have lots and lots of comics. It looks like comics on every page in this book, basically. Well, through 16. Through 16, yeah. Yeah, and that's basically explaining exactly how to play, which... Read this for yourself, because uh, the, especially the comics, they look absolutely hilarious. So. Yeah. This looks like you will have fun reading it. It does. So, that's one of the reasons why we don't want to spoil too much. Uh, we why, don't just for the comics? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... So then, yeah, th- there is um, getting started. Uh, commonly used terms: the game master, players, scenarios, adventures, uh, player characters, NPCs, non-player characters, monsters, characters, allies, enemies, dice. All pretty standard rules. We've all, uh, uh, all of us have played D and D and stuff. Um, I like how you have all these creatures and then dice. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's terms it's specifically. Yeah, I know. So, I know. It's just. Yeah. It's, I mean, know. in Final Fantasy, yeah. who knows? You might have dice as some sort of creature. Fair. I mean, that is true. I mean, you have pots that attack you. You got flan that attacks. I mean, you. even in D and D, modrons are basically dice. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's true. Wait, what is that? Gonna... They're the things from the Plane of Mechanist that are basically one of them is a cube, one's a sphere, one's kind of a, a pyramid shape. Oh, okay. We had them in. Um... Yeah. They were in the Sky City in your campaign. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh. So yeah, so we've got the um, playing the game, and then the Golden Rule. Let's just go ahead and read what they say about the Golden Rule. This game was designed to provide a framework that allows you to embark on exciting and memorable adventures in the magical world of Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate goal is to have fun with your friends, and for this to work... All participants need to be considerate and respectful to one another while playing. Except Doug. Nobody likes that guy. I mean, you're not wrong there. <laughs> Sorry if your name is Doug. I'm talking about a different Doug. Okay? <laughs> Poor Greg. No one likes Greg. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we've got making checks. Um, moving on. Uh, when, not to ma- uh, when not to make a check. Yes. So that's actually, uh, that's actually something that a lot of DMs uh, I've seen don't really completely understand. Yeah. Because it's like, if the if a player is doing these things, like, why would you make them do the check if it's like, you, uh, like, yeah. if someone gives like a very amazing speech and then you have them roll a d20 yeah. and they roll the nat and one. It's, 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 like, it's most often used for social roles when people are, you know, experienced role players and, you know, because it, that can potentially penalize people that aren't as comfortable just acting out in front of the group. Yeah. But, you know, I've also seen it used for stuff like, you know, okay, I look uh, in the third drawer of the desk, underneath the drawer on top, you know, if they're very specific about their, where they're looking, okay, yeah, you find a key. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. But, you know. <laughs> Wait, it's like right there, but you have to roll. It's like, oh, no, yeah. I don't see <laughs> oh, it. Oh, no, I don't see the thing that's right in the place where I was specifically looking. Oh, your eyes were closed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, can you miss it? No. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, oh, so advantage dice. Some traits, abilities, and enchant- enchantments and situations will grant advantage dice. Advantage dice will allow you to roll extra d20s. They said extra d20s with that an s. Means potentially there could be more than two. Yeah. So I wonder if they set actual limits, or if you just get an additional die for each thing that gives you advantage in this system. That would be interesting if they actually did that. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, your returns would get smaller as you add yeah. more dice, because it's going to average out to, you know, basically a, just a slightly higher, slightly higher number each time. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, here, uh, so for example, if you roll two, uh, two advantage dice when making a check, uh, you would roll a total of three d20s. Yeah, okay. so they literally say that, yeah. Okay, then. Um, for that check, after rolling your d20s, choose one of the results to use for the check. 
wow, that is insane. Okay. Um, that uh, I w- uh, that might actually make it a little bit more challenging for your um, roll twenty. Then I don't know. Um, no, there's well, there's there's ways you could. Uh, I believe there's ways you can do it. Like when you're um, playing Shadowrun, for instance, on roll twenty, there's uh, what they call exploding dice, which if you roll a certain number. They'll automatically roll additional dice and keep going that way. So I'm sure there's a mechanic for it. Yeah. So they, they might know how to do it. Um, so then there's some stuff about penalties. Advantage dice and penalties. Opposition checks, which I'm su- assuming will be player versus player or player versus enemy checks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes two or more characters take conflicting actions. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, adventurers, jobs. Uh, so Which is your classes in this game. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so roles. So they actually like specifically explain like tanks, healers, and DPS. Um, DPT. Huh. Or my favorite, D. Just damage. Just damage. Yep. I do damage sometimes every second. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, characters occupy uh, space within the world of Highland, and as such. Possesses a size trait that is uh, that approximates their physical d- uh, dimensions. Most adventurers are medium size, which means they take up one uh, square uh, of one Most square of spa- uh, space in encounter maps. I'm wondering if maybe they're going to do something with um, like uh, some of the bigger, uh, like maybe Rogadin and. Um... I honestly doubt it, or at least I hope not, because it seems like size categories should be more for, like, comparing a human-sized character to, like, a dragon-sized character. There's yeah. There's like, a big difference. Yeah. Like, obviously, I'm, uh, like, I don't think it's necessarily going to be, like, Lollafells are going to be different, but, like, I don't I, w- know. I wouldn't be surprised if for, like, Rogadin and stuff like that, they brought in, like, a powerful build type of trait, where you, Maybe. you treated some things as if you were larger. Yeah. Do you choose a, a race, or is there like a race already connected to each of these classes? So for uh, for these classes, uh, for the ba- for, for this version, um, yeah, you pretty much have pre-made characters. It's pre-made characters at this point, but they do give you a decent amount of information that I feel like you might be able to. You actually... probably could, you know, using the information in here, cobble together a basic character creation system. Yeah. And um, are there any racials? Yeah, I haven't seen any racial stuff yet, so that there might any, be. You know, there aren't any now in. Uh, that's that's actually a good point. That is, yeah. It'd I, be interesting to have a game system where really the only benefit you get from race is roleplay benefits. Yeah. Or drawbacks or whatever. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm sorry. I like I like having race. I'm racist when it comes to RPGs. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't want me to have my twenty strength uh, Lollafell. I'm not saying they can't be 20 well, strength. I think there should be something that like says like that. that I don't know. It's fantasy. The psychology idea that oh, there's like there's there's something beyond human limits. Yeah. You know, that you can be. I don't know. I mean, you know, night vision mm-hmm. is a good thing, or whatever you dark vision. Dark vision, yeah. Um, you know, obviously only. Harothgar and Makote have that. Yeah. So, there's definitely some really interesting information in here. Yeah. Um, Too much to go over in the length of this video, and we want to give you a reason to buy this. Yeah. I probably cut out, uh, I'm probably going to cut out quite a bit of information uh, that we talked about. Yeah, we rambled a bit, so paring this down is probably a good thing. But anyways, folks. I've been Electra Ninja. I've been Astrid Lenore. It's been fun sharing this with you. Stay beautiful. But on. Goodbye. Thank you all for watching this first look at the TTRPG for Final Fantasy XIV. Honestly, I am so excited to actually get to sit down and play this game. If you guys do want to actually see us sit down and play this game with a few of our friends, probably the Nerd Chat Boys, then make sure to leave a comment, leave a like, and we will look into starting that. And As for those of you who are excited for more Final Fantasy content, you're in luck! I will be live streaming more and more as Dawn Trail begins. I'll be taking you guys with me as I adventure (laughs) to see what Dawn Trail has to offer. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that, and hopefully we will see more from 
Astrid Lenore, and Quixote. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja. Hopefully you've enjoyed this adventure, and I will see you guys in the next one. But on!